Hello folks, Lone Adventurer here and today I'm playing a roll and write game called Pencils and Powers. This is a game by a chap called Mark Jindra and it might look a little bit familiar to regular viewers of my channel because there is a game called Doom Realm and Doom Realm is based upon the Pencils and Powers system. So Pencils and Powers did come first and Doom Realm was inspired by this game. Now I've only played one game of Pencils and Powers and I don't think I'm inclined to say I like one more than the other. But what I do like about Pencils and Powers is that there are 11 different sheets 11 different scenarios that you can play through. This one's called The Forgotten King, and it's kind of a, a fantasy setting. The heroes that you are taking on the adventure are the Barbarian, the Shadow Master, the White Knight, and the Treasure Hunter. Sort of a normal fantasy setting. The sheets, are, I've had a quick flick through them, and they all seem quite different to one another, um, different um, mechanics and different uh, monsters that you're facing. Some of them are even different genres, so there's at least one science fiction one that I've seen that looks pretty awesome. So yeah, there's lots to like, and I also I quite like the, um, the style of them. I like the sort of slightly functional uh, layouts and, and iconography for some reason uh, I find it quite pleasing so this is the uh, the forgotten king this sheet within the catacombs beneath the temple of dread ah so the first sheet sorry to stop already the, the first sheet was called the I've got one here actually the Dread Knight, in which you battle um, Zaug, who is the Dread Knight. So I guess this sheet continues on from there. Within the catacombs beneath the Temple of Dread lies the tomb of a forgotten and mysterious king. It is said that an artefact, the Ruby Skull, an item of unimaginable power, was buried with the king. Legend has it that whomever wields the skull becomes as powerful as a god. Dare you face the skeleton king and claim the treasure for yourself? I mean, we, we've got a few general differences to uh, the Dread Knight and I guess to Doom Realm, which feels like it's largely based upon this first sheet. Dread Knight has a number of different monsters that you're facing. Uh, the Forgotten King only has skeletons and the Skeleton King that you theoretically face at the end. And the skeletons all start off quite low level, but they get stronger quicker because each time you defeat a skeleton, all the other ones get stronger. And also a lot of the treasures are cursed, and when you encounter a cursed treasure, it increases the strength of the skeleton. And yeah, so there's that. Um, as, you, as we make our way around the map, there are some forgotten tombs, which are a bit like the random encounters on the first sheet. But you don't have to uh, go over them, you just have to go parallel to them in order to gain access to a forgotten tomb. And they do, the forgotten tombs have different effects to the random encounters of the first sheet. Let's zoom in and have a little look at the heroes. We've got some slightly different mechanics. I'm talking as if you've seen the first sheet, but you really haven't. So the, the, the mechanics each hero starts with three health and three power. The power can be used to activate uh, abilities. Let's see, the Barbarian is probably the most simple. He has a free ability called Rage, which he may use to uh, 
to use up health to activate his powers, um, which seems risky, but it might be an option in a pinch. He also, so his main power is called Frenzy. Um, he deals one damage or rage to deal three damage. Whoa, okay, now I see why you might want to use your health because he can do three damage in one fell swoop. And he can also um, bash to open a locked door, chest, or tomb. And like everybody else, he has the ability to hold a magic sword and a magic shield, should we find those things. The treasure hunter is able to select a treasure to improve by one. I can see that as being quite helpful. He has insight. He is able to disarm a trap or unlock a chest, door, or tomb. And he can raise or lower one died by one and the white knight and the shadow master have uh, abilities called soul burn and generate respectively which allow them to create a shadow or a barrier when a monster dies and then those shadows or barriers can be destroyed for the shadow master in order to uh, deal damage and for the white knight in order to block to damage okay so he's the defense guy and he's the attack guy so we've got some interesting powers um, abilities that we can use there now if you haven't watched my doom realm videos i'll pop a link up in the corner of the video and in the description below but i'll give you a very quick overview we roll three dice i think in doom realm it's actually four dice and we do that 35 times so this could be quite a long video um, and once I get into the rolling feel free to skip ahead a little bit if you want to uh, see something more exciting happening because it tends to be or at least the way I play it is I try to avoid attacking the monsters for as long as possible because when you attack the monster you gain the treasures and once you've killed the monster, you can't get any treasures from that monster. So it pays to sort of build them up as much as you possibly can before attacking the monsters. At least that's what I think anyway. You roll three dice. You assign one to improve a monster, one to improve a treasure, and one to allow you to move around the uh, map. And that is more or less it. Once you've done those three things, you have to make a decision as to whether you're going to attack a monster. Um, and uh, you can only attack a monster if you have passed in front of the uh, room in which that monster resides. So that's actually what we need to do first. We need to number the treasures and the monsters. So to set up the game sheet, you need to roll three dice. And then you re-roll until they're all different. There we go. All right, so we need to decide one to start. I think I'm gonna do this somewhat randomly. I'm sure there's tactical ways to do this, but the thing is, I'm greedy. One of the dice is used to signify how much gold you start with. So I'm just gonna use the six to be the gold. And then we use the two for the treasures and the five for the monsters. So we write five in the top box here, and then six, one, two, three, four. So our Skeleton King is in room four over here. Every other room has a skeleton in. Now, this treasure here has the key to the final boss's room. So we do have to make sure we get that up. And I always find that a little bit stressful, constantly assigning to, uh, to, to that room. Um, okay, sorry. And two is gonna go here. So this treasure here is in the room with this skeleton, which is this room here. Three, four, five, six, one. 
So our skeleton key, I guess it is, is uh, in room one with this skeleton. All right, I think we should just get into it because there's a lot of rolls ahead of us. I will try and go quickly. I'll try not to be too indecisive. And maybe I should have said the aim of the game is purely um, a beat your own score system. So at the end of the game, we will generate a score based upon our performance in the game and see how well we did. I've only got one sheet to compare it to, and I guess the sheets might not be comparable to each other, but um, it's fun to play anyway. Here we go. 665. So we keep track of the uh, rolls over here. There's also um, a setup one where I should have written my setup numbers which were two, five, and six. All right, let's just do six on movement. And it doesn't matter too much, actually. We'll do five there and six there. Okay. So for the movement, we start down here on the start spot. Six allows us to draw this shape here. I think there's no point in immediately going over to one because it's going to take me ages to build up all the treasure in one, so I guess I'll head over in this direction. And immediately make a mistake. Nope, no, let's just leave it now that I've done it, fine. So I'm not gonna head off in that direction, I'm gonna draw the shape like that. There we go, I was gonna do it differently, but hey ho. Then six means we have to improve this skeleton by one. So if we have a little zoom in on that skeleton, I just improved the skeleton's power, which is the strength with which he attacks us. I could have improved his health. Now that I've improved his power, I can't improve the power again until I improve his health. The one or the other can never be more than one part beyond the other, if you see what I mean. So I can't go to three until that one's to two. All of the skeletons have the same um, ability or, or power. So all it does is, as I said earlier, improves all other skeletons by one, and you gain two gold when defeated. So that it, all, all of it only matters when you face the skeleton, really. And then five will allow us to improve this treasure by one. And you can see that each of the um, squares has a little icon below it. And the icon signifies what that, um, when you gain that treasure, what that level of the treasure gets for you. Sometimes it's negative, like here, this is a curse. Sometimes it's positive, that's a coin. All the way up here, oh, that's a, um, a trap, so we'd have to disarm that or suffer the consequences. And then we've got the magic shield and the magic sword that you would gain up at the top here. So you have to work quite hard in this uh, scenario, by the looks of things, to gain um, shields and swords. Right, okay, on to the next roll. Two, three, five. I think I'll use the three for the uh, navigation. Let's do two there. Actually, where's room two? We're going to get to room two quite early, so I want to get that treasure up. So room two is close to where we are. And we'll put five on the monster. So three is this shape here. Five to improve this skeleton. Two to improve this treasure. So four to draw this shape. Let's go down this back route here. That's going to get me to this uh, forgotten tomb quite quickly. There's no rush getting to the door really because uh, it's going to be 
at least a few rolls before I decide to actually go into this room. Three to improve that skeleton there. I really am just randomly selecting whether to improve power or health at this point. And one to improve this treasure here. Six, six, six. Ominous. So, well, I mean, nice and simple, really, isn't it? It's going to be six on each. Uh, so that allows us to draw this shape here. Now, look at that. That's not. Oh, no, no, it can. All right, when you shade in a square adjacent to a forgotten tomb and you have a power that grants you access, you may roll a personal die and consult the forgotten tomb table. You have to have a power to grant you access. Okay, well, I guess the tombs are locked, which is pretty brutal. It seems the treasure hunter can open a tomb and the barbarian can open a tomb, which means I have to use their powers which sucks because their powers are really useful and theoretically I could open the tomb and encounter something really rubbish in there or there may be like a one if you roll a one you just get to shade in a square okay well I guess I'm going to do it I'm going to use the treasure hunters um, power roll my dice four a wandering monster Two attack, two health, four gold. Ooh. Now, wandering monsters don't work the same as normal attacks. Usually you roll a attack dice, and I'm not going to be doing that. You can only use your powers and your magical items. I don't have any magical items yet. So really, my only choice is to use the Barbarian's Frenzy ability which seems quite wasteful, um, but I guess I'll do it. I don't really feel good about using these powers so early on, if I'm honest. So the Barbarian, he goes into a frenzy, he kills the wandering monster, then we defeat it and gain four gold. Oh, we also need to take two damage. Blimey, two damage taken. Some gold gained. Gold is helpful. Gold is important. It allows you to level up your characters. Yeah. Okay. All right. That, that used up some stuff there, didn't I? Okay. So six. Improve that skeleton. And six. Improve that treasure. One, five, six. Okay, we're going to uh, draw this shape here, which will allow us to pleasingly creep around the side of this room. Improve this skeleton and this treasure. If I put a four here, I would improve the Skeleton King. I don't really like directly improving the boss if I can avoid it. Right, so four. Oh, that's going to be that shape there. Okay, suppose I could go up there. Or I could put it over here. Should we put it over there? Let's just uh, use it to make our way over to the other um, forgotten tomb. Okay. All right. Three, five, six. I feel like I'm rolling a lot of fives and sixes. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it means rooms five and six are quite far away. So really, I want to be improving rooms three and four 
actually I'm reconsidering here I'm going to put the 3 there and the 6 there yeah so the 6 there we go so we're now having shaded in shaded in the uh, front of room 2 it means we can theoretically access that room and encounter this skeleton. But my treasure for room two is quite paltry. So I would like to quite like to get that up before going in there, but we'll see how it goes. And improving that skeleton and that treasure. I'm actually going to use that to start making our way up here. And the six. The skeleton's starting to get a bit more beefy. And the one. Like that. So I keep improving this one skeleton, which I don't really like doing, but um, I wasn't going to use the four because that would improve the skeleton king. And I wanted to use the two on the treasure because I want to get that treasure up. Ideally, another three so that I could get that sword when I encounter the skeleton in that room. That was an easy choice because I didn't want to use those two fours in the monsters because I don't want to improve the Skeleton King. So four is that one. Two. First improvement on that Skeleton. And four, building up that treasure. All right, I thought it would be nice to improve the treasure in room three. Um, and I didn't want to use the six over here again, so I'm using the five. So six on the movement. Okay, where are we going to go? Uh, I'm now scared of the Forgotten Tombs because it uses up all my stuff. Uh, let's just uh, gain access to room one. I'm also getting quite twitchy about how powerful these skeletons are getting. Because remember, when I defeat a skeleton, every other skeleton gets more powerful. <laughs> that was painful, so I'm going to continue to improve this skeleton, it would appear. Because I really want to use that for my treasure, and I don't want to use the four to um, beef up the skeleton king. So four is drawing this one again, being quite indecisive. I think we'll just 
Let's just go up here. Six. see here that I am rolling a lot of sixes. Almost every roll has at least one six. And this roll was three sixes and my first roll was two sixes. So nice. Two, two, three. A little bit different. Right. So for treasure uh, three, if I get two more, then I'll gain a magic shield and a magic sword, which will be super, super handy. Uh, I'm sort of nervously avoiding um, tombs at the moment because I feel like uh, I want to hold off checking them out for the time being because they seem a little bit risky. Okay, one more three. One more three. Once I've got that sword, I will probably consider going in there and we'll finish this first video on a fight with a skeleton and then uh, finish up in a second video, I think. This one again. Five on that beefy skeleton. I'm not even sure I'm ever going to fight him. He's going to get so massive. And three on this treasure. All right. So let's fight the skeleton in room three, which we do have access to. He is not a particularly powerful skeleton, which is nice. Okay, so this is how it works. We're gonna roll a dice, that will give us our attack value. We need to do a total of two damage, so it should be okay. I can use various special abilities if I want to, if I need to. And then I will receive two points of damage from the skeleton, regardless of whether I kill it or not. Four. There we go. So four um, points of damage, which kills the skeleton. We... Where am I going? Room three. Fill in this little tombstone here so we know he is dead. Oh, I need to take two points of damage. I think we'll just do... I think the treasure hunter on this occasion can take two points of damage. One more point of damage and he's a dead man. And then I would lose access to his abilities and obviously any swords or shields that he had. So when we kill the skeleton, we gain two gold and improve all other skeletons by one. So my gold's going up to 12. All the other skeletons, I guess, including the skeleton king. So him, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Yikes. Okay. Then, done all that. Then we need to have a look at the treasure. So let's have a look at our treasure. Oh, so the first thing is a curse. Improve a skeleton by one. So I'm going to improve skeleton. I'm assuming it has to be a live skeleton. So we'll do that. Uh, then we've got a little scroll. Oh, that's the map that allows us to shade in three squares in any shape, presumably, which is quite handy, or in any location. Where would it be nice? Well, let's shade in one there, so we've got easy access to that forgotten tomb if we choose to do it. Two, 
two more. Let's just do that to make our way closer to six. Um, then we're gaining one coin. That's the only coin we're gaining, so I'll increase our gold to 13. Then we encounter a, uh, a locked chest, which means everything beyond that is in a chest that we have to unlock. So I can use the uh, insight power of the treasure hunter to unlock a chest. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I just remembered another thing that I forgot to do, but we'll finish this first. And that gains us access to the shield and the sword. So I need to decide who I'm going to give the shield and sword to. And I guess the only consideration is if you give it to someone who dies early, then that's a bad thing. I think I'll give the sword... No, I'm going to give the shield to the barbarian and the sword to the shadow master. Okay, and the thing that I forgot... Well, have I forgotten it again? <laughs> what did I remember? Oh yes, the uh, soul burn and generate abilities of the shadow master and the white knight. Soul burn. Free ability. Create a shadow when a monster dies. So all I do for now. And I should have done this with the wandering monster as well. So he should have two shadows. And then the white knight generate. Create a barrier when a monster dies. So my shadow master has two shadows. And my white knight has two barriers that they can use to do stuff with their powers. With that done, I think this is the end. Now, do you know what? I'm going to actually also uh, level up two characters. So Tiny Rising, but you can spend six gold to increase any character by one level. It costs seven gold to increase a character to by a second level, but only six gold the first time. So I'm going to spend 12 gold and improve two of my characters. And I think the characters I'm going to improve are the Barbarian. So he gains an additional maximum health and an additional maximum power. And I think it might be sensible to do the Treasure Hunter because I don't want him to die because he helps us by opening things. We've still got another 20 rounds to play through. I'll try and do them quickly. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. It is a really fun little system. And I do, I do love how many different scenarios there are to explore. So you're definitely going to see at least one more. Unless nobody watches this video. In which case, um, I probably won't do another one. But I'm definitely going to be playing more. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more adventures just like this, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.